I started thinking seriously about the seminary toward the end of my college career. Um, but I knew I didn't want to enter just yet. I knew I wanted to live on my home for a little while. I wanted to get some experience, you know, in the world for a little while. Um, so I went home, uh, back to Massachusetts, and did some stringer work, some writing for a local newspaper, and then took those clippings down to Washington, D.C. Got myself a job down there covering Capitol Hill, covering Congress. You know, I started out in banking uh, back in the 80s. Uh, it was a lot of fun, actually. It was a lot of fun. A lot of us younger folk were there at the time. Um, but having begun to think about having had, had my two uncles, my own family, and you know, having a Catholic upbringing, um, what started to really bug me in Washington, D.C. in the 80s was all the uh, homeless folk, mm. homeless folk everywhere. And it was just like, you know, how can this be? You know, we're the wealthiest country in the world, and yet here these, here these people are with nothing. Um, and you literally in the 80s had to step over folk to get into the metro. Um, and, and so little by little I started to get to know some of the folk who were homeless and, and I began to think, you know, maybe I'm not cut out to be a reporter in Congress. Maybe the good Lord is leading me somewhere else. When I was in the seminary, I think uh, the most formative one in the seminary was when I went to Peru. And um, in Peru I saw ever more clearly, clearly, clearly uh, the influence that priests and brothers and sisters uh, have on people's lives, a positive influence. Peru in the 90s was just a desperately poor country in the midst of a civil war with Sendero Luminoso. And to have seen how our, how our guys, our priests and brothers and sisters are there as well, uh, to see how we work as a family, first of all, in, in Holy Cross for uh, our tradition of, in Basil Moreau and the priests and brothers and sisters, uh, and, the, and the influence, the impact that you have on people's lives as they literally struggled for food, as, as people literally every day struggled for a job, struggled for food, and, and were under this threat of, of a civil war with this guerrilla group. Uh, that really opened my eyes to, uh, to the presence of God, uh, especially in folks who are poor. Uh, but it really opened my eyes also to the, the just great wealth of our charism and Holy Cross. The experiences for me uh, have helped to root in my own heart and soul what Moreau talks about, that we go as educators in the faith to the poor and the abandoned, uh, because nobody else will go. They just won't. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, that's not a criticism of other folk. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if I had my own family, uh, if I had mortgage bills, car payments, you know, children, I, I couldn't do it either. You know? uh, so, so our life, our religious life in Holy Cross, really frees me to do that. And it's, uh, so I, I really love that part of the charism of, of Moreau and, and what we do is in Holy Cross. I think for, for folks uh, who struggle economically right now is, is to make sure that they keep their prayers going, their rosaries, they keep getting to Mass, that they plug into a community. Uh, because a community is going to have the resources that they need, the spiritual resources, the psychological resources, less so the economic resources, but they'll at least have some economic resources for them uh, to pay a bill here or give them some food there. Uh, so find your community uh, and plug into it mm -hmm. uh, because when you're there too then the community will ask back from that person you know what are your gifts and talents uh, <laughs> are you a lawyer or an architect or uh, accountant uh, you go to carpentry or plumbing uh, and all this helps all this works together mm -hmm. uh, so yeah no it's uh, that's that's what I'd say you know get to find your local Catholic community and plug into it I think for our youth to, to follow your heart, because uh, oftentimes, oftentimes you'll hear, oh, there are no vocations, quote unquote. Well, there are. Uh, there are vocations to the priesthood, to the religious life, and to serve, uh, and to really give their lives uh, to God in a different way. Uh, they might not want to be a priest or brother or sister. They might want to be. Come and discover, really, that's, that's the big deal. And we'll help you in Holy Cross also to discover those gifts and talents. So I think the one word is risk. 
take that risk um, and say, you know, this is where my heart seems to be leading. Let me at least try it. Because as my dad said to me when I was thinking about entering the seminary, he said, you know, if you don't try it, you'll never know. <laughs>